I know y'all can't see me, but I've woken up this morning, I've done my little browsing on social media, and I'm just in bed watching my show, Young Justice. Um, I need to go to the gym, and I am. I will. I just want to watch a little TV first. I just want to stay in the bed a little bit. But I will go to the gym, I promise. Okay, I'm up. As promised, I watched like three episodes of Young Justice. I was getting all into it. I was like, no, I need to go to the gym. But anyways, I wanted to come to you right quick and let you know um, to my friend of the channel, Opal. She had commented and said that she was actually interested in a book that I was talking about. I started reading, so I wanted to tell you a little bit about that. So anyways, it is called, sorry, I'm out of breath. I was dancing. It's called Rosewater. It's by a Nigerian, and Nigerian, a Nigerian author named Tade Thomas. Um, and let me just tell you a little about the book. So here, let me, matter of fact, let me just read it to you. Let me give it to you. Okay, I'm gonna read the back cover for you. <clears throat> Rosewater is a town on the edge, a community formed around the edges of a mysterious biodome. Its residents comprise the hopeful, the hungry, and the helpless. People eager for a glimpse inside the dome or a taste of its rumored healing powers. Caro is a government agent with a criminal past, a sensitive. He can navigate the massive psychic space created by the dome. But when something within the dome begins killing off other sensitives, Caro must defy his masters to avert a horrifying future. Anyway, so that's what the back cover gives, but let me just tell you a little bit of the story. Well, well I'm gonna just tell you a little bit of like the details. So as I said, it, he's a sensitive, so they're like psychic people, but like not psychic in the way that we would think psychic, like not the typical psychic, like, okay. So he can like access people's minds and their memories and their feelings, their emotions. Like he can read their minds, but like not in the literal sense, like, Hmm, I wonder what he's thinking and then like they're talking to themselves like it's not that like he can like jump into when he connects with somebody he feels like whatever emotions they're feeling he can feel their memories he can feel their sensations of a memory that they're having um and then there's this place called the xenosphere it's like imagine like the cloud it's that's the psychic space that it was talking about on the back of the book and basically it's like where everybody's like being or thoughts are and it's only accessed by sensitive so me i'm not a sensitive so i don't even know that that place exists but him he can go there to retrieve information or to connect with people to communicate with people to make people even think other stuff there was a part where he made, he went in somebody's mind and made them think that they were drowning so like in real life they're like you know can't breathe and like can't breathe and they're struggling to breathe and all that other stuff and everybody's looking at him like girl what are you doing but like they don't know in his mind he's drowning like he literally believes that he's drowning right now so for that reason the sensitives are really dangerous and so it's not something that he can go around boasting that he is because they're not supposed to be like people don't like them for obvious reasons um and he works for like a secret government agency and they're like interrogating people and they use him for interrogation and stuff but then he keeps trying to People trying to kill him and shit. And then as I mentioned, like, the sensitives are dying. Like, they're getting sick and, and dying, losing their powers, and they don't know why. So, you know, that may be his fate. We don't know. Um, and then there's, like, a mysterious dome in the middle, which I haven't gotten to why it's there or where it came from. But it's like a, a dome, like a force field dome in the middle of their city. Um, and nobody knows, well, we don't know what's inside yet. But Carl has been there before, so we're going to get to that in the book. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really interesting. Every once a year, it's called opening day. The dome opens and it like heals people, um, of their like sicknesses and injuries and everything like that. And it even like rate, some people bring like dead bodies to opening day so that it can revive the bodies. But the thing is it revives them without a soul. It just, it, it listen, it's like a zombie type of thing. Girl, you gotta, you gotta read it. You gotta read it to believe it. It's, it's really good though. And like, I was kind of skeptical of doing like a sci-fi type of book because I ain't want, you know, it to be too space aliens, which don't get me wrong. Like some of my favorite movies are sci-fi movies with space and aliens and everything 
anything like it. But I, just for my book, I wanted it to be something that I could still, you know, still have one foot on earth. And it's set in the year 2066 in Nigeria. And these are real people, not real people, but you know, not aliens. So it's really, it's really fascinating. So I definitely, definitely recommend it if, you know, this sounds interesting to you or if you're into science fiction or any of that. It's really, really fascinating. Um, I'm trying not to read too fast. I'm already halfway through the book, like literally at the halfway mark of the book. So I haven't been reading it as of like the past few days because like I don't want to finish the book already. But it's part one in a trilogy um, by the same author. So when I do finish this book, I'm going to immediately go and pick up the other one. And I wonder if I can get the other two in a set. I don't know. But um, as promised, going to the gym. So I will talk to y'all after the gym. What do I have planned for today? When I get back from the gym, I do want to, I might cook something. I was watching Arnell Armand, uh, her video, she did a cooking video with Masego and they were making a peach cobbler and it just got like, I was like, oh wow, that's so easy. So I think I want to try to make a peach cobbler. So I'll probably do that when I get back home. All right, so I'm back from the gym back from the oh and i stopped by the grocery store so i just figured i'd do a little grocery haul to show y'all what i got mom if you're watching this don't watch this because <laughs> i know she gonna say then put a bunch of junk well that's fine first things first got me some milk so i got this little um coconut curry sauce pack and it's actually like liquid sauce in here but i like looked at it and i looked at the chicken i was like mm, that would probably be good like over pasta you know like usually you eat curry with rice but anyways I want to try to make like a curry I was thinking like an alfredo like think of like fettuccine noodles um, so instead of alfredo sauce so using this with some chicken um, and then maybe add some vegetables in it as it like oh maybe with broccoli Kiana imagine a curry pasta with broccoli oh, yeah. damn it I should have I should have got some fucking broccoli but I didn't get the broccoli but um got that and then I got some chicken these tenderloins it was on sale for $2.99 a pound so I just got some chicken tenderloins that I can use for my curry pasta when I make that um I originally went there because I wanted to make the peach cobbler did I tell you guys that already um I think I did say that already if not right now I watched her video she made a peach cobbler with Masego I did talk about this anyways got the ingredients so I got a can of sliced peaches she was saying get a can of diced peaches they don't have diced peaches in a can honey um they got the diced peaches like in the cup but I'm I was afraid it wasn't like the same juice so I was like mm, let me just get the slice um and then I got me some ground cinnamon and some vanilla extract because I didn't know if we already had some here which we did and that vanilla is expensive but whatever um, and then my roommate called and she was just like, well, if you make a peach cobbler, make sure you get some uh, vanilla ice cream. So I got my favorite slow churned dryers, pure vanilla ice cream to go with our peach cobbler. These, I only grabbed them because they was just like, oh, don't be looking all up in my freezer. These were like on sale, like a big, there's 24 of these little ice cream bars and it's three different flavors. Um, and it was only $3.99, originally $10. So I was like, well, why not? Let's try it. Like I, I like ice cream bars and stuff um, but it's chocolate banana and orange flavor if you guys have had these comment down below and let me know did you like them are they good because we are going to be giving those a try um, let's see and then I got the pie crust for my cobbler and then I also I got me these little mini pies because I've just been having a real sweet tooth lately and instead of me like going out to you know, get ice cream or to get froyo or to go get dessert or get cake or cookies, whatever. Instead of me spending all that money like going out, I figured I would just go to the grocery store and get all my sweet tooth craving items here today. So I got that. <laughs> I got some gushers because I love gushers. They're my one of my favorites. But because they was two for five dollars, then I just went ahead and got me some fruit snacks too. So I got some Pokemon fruit snacks. And then I got me some generic cereal. I was originally gonna grab a bag of Captain Crunch, but then I have had these before and they taste literally like Captain Crunch. Like there's no difference. So I was like, these are cheaper and I get more. So I got me some generic cereal. And then I just grabbed me a little snack um, of some some sushi that they sell at the grocery store, it's spicy California rolls. So I, cause I'm hungry, just came from the gym. So that is what I'm going to eat. So as part of my new year resolution, I said I wanted to cook more. So this is actually going to be another sub vlog. So I said I was gonna make the peach cobbler, peach pie. I am, it is currently in the oven baking, but it's gonna be too long to put in this vlog. So 
Next vlog is gonna be the peach pie vlog. I think it's gonna come out really good. I ate the leftover peaches with some of the leftover sauce that filling that I have made. And oh, it already tastes like a peach cobbler. So only thing that can really go wrong is this crust. So we gonna see what that's about. Um, but I really need to clean up this kitchen. Oh my God. And it's so annoying because I wanna wash the dishes. But the damn dishwasher is full. Nobody ever empties out the damn dishwasher. I'm about to cook me some dinner real quick. I'm going to go ahead and how I showed you, I got that uh, curry sauce or whatever. I'm going to try to make me a little makeshift curry pasta. Uh, with the sauce, you're supposed to essentially like cook either chicken or vegetables and then just put this sauce on top and let it simmer all together. So that's essentially what I'm going to do. I have some broccoli florets and I also have my chicken that I bought. So I'm about to go ahead and... So, um, Excuse me, pan fry this, pan cook this chicken real quick, get into some nice and flavorful, season it up, get my broccoli, and then I'm just going to use some uh, fettuccine noodles, and I'm gonna make, and then I'm gonna pour the sauce on it. So yeah, I'll let you know how that go. Y'all, my uh, curry alfredo that I experimented and made, added some broccoli in there and everything. It came out so good, I'm so impressed. We already been eating. I just had to update you. There go my pie, by the way. We're going to get into that next. Ooh. Well, I had a successful day of cooking experience. Experiments, excuse me. Um, but stay tuned for the pie vlog because my, my pie came out immaculate. So I want y'all to see that. But also my curry, uh, it was curry chicken and broccoli fettuccine is what I made and it I, that came out amazing too so it was just a successful day of cooking excuse me if the TV's loud but we watching a Tiffany Haddish new stand up not funny by the way but um yeah I'm about to get in the shower you mean probably another piece of pie and then watch some TV hope you guys enjoyed the vlog I will see you when I see you bye